All right, let's see what we got going on here. All right, today I'm going to talk about the Code of Bell. I think it's called the Camper Hat. Let's see. Best EDC hat. Yeah, the Code of Bell Basics Camper Hat. So I've had this hat for about, I guess probably about a month now. And before I bought it, I had been having these sort of daydreams while running. Mainly when I was out in um, India, in this place where we live and this hill that I run that's just totally exposed <laughs> to the brutal sun. And I was running with this, you know, a nice white hat, sun protected UV, etc., but no ventilation and not waterproof. So, you know, the more I sweat, the more it sags, the more it blocks the air, the more I get heated, the more it's just hot. Long story short, I had a Volcom hat um, that I bought in LA like in 2016 that I really loved. I think it lasted probably, probably lasted like a good three years. God, it's crazy. It seems longer. 2016 to, yeah, 2019, 2020, probably to maybe to 2020. And then it just slowly started to, to die out where I just, I couldn't justify using it anymore because it didn't hold its shape. The fabric, um, the, the, it was a nylon, sort of a basic nylon. So the fabric sort of because of the UV kind of deteriorated. So it wasn't very stiff anymore. It was more like flimsy. The bill was going down like that. You know, it kind of just all went just like, so I had switched to this pretty basic, um, sort of run of the mill, you know, generic sort of sun hat. And they've been doing good, you know, they're pretty lightweight, et cetera, uh, white, um, easy, comfortable. But over the years, yeah, I guess, it, you know, since it has been that long, I, cause me and Elsa had tried to find another one. Like she looked everywhere thought she even found it uh i think in germany or holland and she ended up getting it and it was just i you know i was like oh it's it's so close it was exactly the same except the fabric wasn't the same and that fabric on that first Vulcan from that i bought in la was really quite good it was like this like it was a very tight weave where it felt almost like a like a feb, uh, like a paper mache kind of feel where it was like crunchy and cringly when it got wet then dry and even you know when it was new and for the first couple of years um but this one she ended up buying ended up being cotton so it was eh, just it wasn't what i was looking for you know it wasn't the 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 thing and ended up looking so good on her that yeah she ended up just taking it over and she's pretty much worn hers out so i had been running this hill in goa and just sort of running it just being so hot you know just running it just going up the hills in the heat and the sun and the hotness and just thinking oh man if i could just had a uh some ventilation <laughs> and that the fabric was more stiff you know using my all i was gonna every time i was up there i was like oh man i'm gonna make some some air holes and cut something out and do something to that hat and i was just thinking like oh man why don't they make a hat out of you know like a dyneema or an x-pack or something where it's waterproof and it holds a shape and so, you know, I just, you know, I kept thinking about that. And for me, making a hat, I think is just too difficult. Uh, you know, 
I can make a bag like this and it, you know, I've, I've really gotten good at it, but making a hat, I think is, it takes a different, different skill and I probably could learn it over time, but I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty complicated. This one, especially, but hats in general are a little bit complicated the way you got to sew them. Um, the binding that goes on them to, you know, to block the stitches, etc. So, um, this hat, yes, you can just leave it there. Little you can just leave it there. <laughs> Thank you. Teja. Yeah. Um, so, where was I? Um, <laughs> she's so sweet. Wrote me uh, some peanut butter and some crackers. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, so I had been thinking about this hat, this design and running and out of that. Every time I get back, I'm just exhausted. So, you know, I don't, I end up not doing the hat cutouts, even though I really could have done that, but it just never happened. I, I wasn't inspired enough for whatever reason, you know? And then one day, I, I don't know what happened. I think I was looking at some type of bags or something and next thing you know, I came across the, um, this Coda Bell website and it had this, it had this hat. And I was like, oh my God, I, I was like, this is it. You know, they really nailed it. Look, so they put in air vents here, air vents. Everyone's here. Everyone's here. It's made out of an x pack fabric, so it's stiff. It's completely waterproof. The fabric, now the lining, of course, the headband is a soft, um, you know, absorbent lining, which is what you want for a sweatband. You're going to be sweating where it's touching, and you want it to basically come off and then go into the end and drip off there. And then it's got, you know, normal, pretty normal netting. Um, but the main deal is that it's this x pack fabric, which is completely waterproof, super light, super strong, and stiff. Almost like you were holding a cowboy hat. So when I saw this, I was like, you know, on paper, I, I really, it even, it even has a adjustable just by pinching it. And then you can move it, micro adjustments. Of course, the elastic... So it's kind of a little, give it a little stretch and just a, really a, a nice design. Look at that. And so I saw it and I, I really couldn't believe it. I was like, could this be it? You know, after all of the searching, every, every time I go into a surf store, which is where I found the original Volcom, I always look, uh, you know, what do they have? What are the new styles from Volcom? You know, what are people offering? And I just couldn't, can't find it. You know, I, I'm not unable to find something like this. And turns out this was a sort of a, um, you know, a special collection. There was a limited number and they're sold out. They've been sold out. It was sold for $59 from uh, where they're based. I think they're based in Los Angeles. Um, yeah, based in Los Angeles and they were sold out, you know, which is, ah, bummer. Now I'm in Portugal, so, you know, I'm kind of used to things not being available here <laughs> and also in India and also unavailable. So I just kept looking and I ended up finding this place out of Hong Kong that, um, let's see, what was it called? Uh back I can't remember um I can't remember let's see here it was from suburban suburban 
Yeah, suburban, um, suburban Hong Kong. They're like basically like a bag shop out of Hong Kong that's apparently pretty, pretty well known, which I, I had never heard of them. And I, they had it in stock and I ordered it. It was like, I think it was the same price, 59 euros plus shipping plus duties. So I think I paid a, around 85 euros, which, you know, I, for me, I think the way I think, and I think the way this story is gone is that, you know, it's sort of, it's a, st it's not a steal, but it's like a good deal. It's a good value for me because of, it's just not common. It's very unique hat. These, this is not like, a normal, usually a hat would be sort of a dime a dozen. You can find them anywhere. Basically any, any, any convenience store, stop, sports store, anything. This is not like that. This is more like, yeah, <laughs> you got a special order out of Hong Kong because the shop in Los Angeles sold out probably pretty quickly. And based on what I talked to the customer service in, um, at the Suburban was that, yeah, they ordered them and they, they had them. They ordered some before they ran out of stock. So anyway, so long story short is I've been using it for maybe a month now. And yeah, you know, from the first run that I, it was kind of a funny story actually before I went on the first run with it, which is why I bought it, I was hesitant to like mess it up, you know, not to get it, get it all dirty or like <laughs> somehow, somehow mess it up in some form or fashion, which is just, it's hilarious when you're in that moment and you're, and you're in there and you're just, you can't quite realize that that's just completely ridiculous or well, for whatever reason anyway i remember i was right at the edge and i was about to go and i was still deciding should i go with it or shouldn't i and at the end i was just like it's ridiculous i literally bought this for this scenario i have to take it, it, it it's it makes no sense um and I went out on the first run with it and it, almost immediately I, re I remembered why I love that original Volcom hat so much for running. And it was because of how stiff it is. It's really waterproof and stiff and super lightweight. So it stays up on my head. So when I'm running, I can block the sun, which is why I, I wear a hat is to block the sun. So I'm running and as, the, as I'm in sun, I always put my hat down like this. I'm running, you know, when it sits up high, so it, everything's still breathing. You know, in places where there's no sun, pop it around, keep it really loose, and it stays on my head while I'm running, cruising through the trails, you know, and it's just fantastic. So amazing. And as far as performance, I mean, I'm running so... I'll get an hour into my run, and I think I've been on maybe six or seven two and a half hour runs with this so far in a, in a month. Maybe more than that, two a week. So maybe something like eight. I did go bike camping, so maybe, maybe it is like six. But about an hour into my run, hour and 20 minutes, there's a natural sort of spring in one of these little villages that I come into from the, from the forest. And it's like all stone. It's where they used to wash clothes in the village, actually, when it was like, you know, probably not so long ago, 30 years ago, and then back. And the water's there. It is coming out. It says now in uh, controlada, which means basically, you know, we don't control it and we don't test it and we don't know if it's any good, but what i found in these villages is that it is it's wonderful actually so i always stop there wash off my bottle wash off my arms fill it up again wash off my face and with this hat i can just completely you know get it wet get it soaked get it all wet all up inside and it continues to re remain stiff 
And then, you know, I put it on and it's just like dripping water and I'm running and it's like still stiff on the top of my head. There's airflow. It's really, really wonderful. So, you know, I'm running through the forest, blah, blah, blah. You know, and I get to the end. I'm, I'm walking home. I'm finally, you know, I, the walk home is like 20 minutes from the forest. And I'm slowly walking. I'm in the sun. I'm ducking it down. It's stiff. It's wonderful. Airflow. Um, and then I get back home. And then part of my, you know, routine is that I completely rinse it off. Here in Portugal, it's quite, uh, it, you know, I sweat a lot, but it will often turn to... Um, salt stains so there might be some salt stains and then i just i literally go to the hose and i'm like just pouring water on it rinsing it out getting the salt stains out and then i take it on the clothesline hang it up and let it just drip dry in the sun i think it's probably exactly pretty much as it was from the beginning when i bought it which is pretty fantastic it, it really there's been no loss in the shape no loss in anything. I mean, now it's still quite, <laughs> in theory, I think this hat should last easily more than the other hat, just because of the UV. The, the UV killed that other hat. And also the other hat, the, the buckle here, it had a normal like snap buckle and it, you know, it was falling apart it, it it was um decaying sort of because of all the salt and the sweat and eventually i actually took it out and i redid it with a uh, just a velcro actually a super lightweight velcro and that was actually amazing one day i'll probably do that with this you know actually because this um this uh elastic will will go bad uh, not you know it won't take too long like this plastic will go bad way before this elastic i mean way after this elastic so eventually probably i could just replace this with a velcro and that would probably be better in the in like technically because of how lightweight the velcro would be this has a little you know it's a little weight as you can see it's not it's not sagging but it's it is leaning towards that buckle because of the weight of that buckle which is is fine because it's not too much and it is really nice to adjust it um you know one thing that i do with you know like a lightweight hoodie is I'll have on and I'll put the hoodie on on my head and then I'll put the hat over my hoodie and then I can actually ride the bicycle with my ears covered and my neck covered. So that's, you know, things like that are quite nice with a hat like this because of their stiffness. They sort of, you know, they still let your head breathe. Anyway, so, um, yeah, the Code of Bell, uh, what is it? The Basics Camper Hat. This is the pitch black version, and it's again this cross weave X pack fabric, which is, I mean, this fabric is very similar to this. This is the uh, VX21, and this is the X pack, so it's very, very similar, but not exactly the same, but very similar. I love this though, and this has quite packable as well, you know. Ah, look at that beauty. Anyway, so I just wanted to do for my own um, entertainment, really. I wanted to do a little, um, little practice with this little hobby. And yeah, talk about this hat. I'm going to try to do this with a few different little products that I have and sort of see if I can, um, you know, maybe practice and get better at it. It's quite fun. I do like it, especially if maybe they, they keep short. You know, I've done a few lately about my own products, like this bag and this bag, that um, I end up going a little too far. You know, it's a little too long. Uh, which is, you know, it's a little tiring. 
<laughs> to say the least. But anyway, all right, so Dakota Bell camper hat in eco pack fabric. Um, yeah, durable, waterproof. Um, let's see, you know, when, like waterproof, it's not just about not letting water through it. It's about not absorbing water. So on the hat that I was using just before this and the other hat as it continued to be used would they, they like the hat I was using just before this would absorb water, you know, sweat, water, everything. And so halfway through my run, it would just be like sagging and heavy, full of water, full of sweat. And this one, you can just completely soak it and it does not do that. And that, I mean, for... For a runner like me, um, who likes to wear a hat like this, very loose on my head while I'm running, and not to mention, I will just wear this hat like out in general. I use, I use it as, if I'm gonna go for a walk or I'm out in the town or wherever, I like a hat like this to keep the sun off of my face. As you can see, I'm, I'm blocking the, 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 the light right here. You know, it keeps the sun off your face. This, with a lightweight sun hoodie, it's perfect you know it is really good so let's see weight 110 grams constructed using waterproof recycled eco pack fabric custom designed laser cut slits and vent sliding plus self-locking rear side adjuster perforated front visor oh that's another cool feature you can't actually see it but they have holes like actual holes cut out in the stiff uh whatever they use for this board they cut holes out so it's even lighter than it would be otherwise which that's such a slick um you know style uh slick uh, design element i guess um uh, perforated front visor reflective loop on the rear soft moisture wicking antimicrobial headband lightweight design and construction cofb rubber logo yeah right there coda bell little rubber logo very nice little elegant design what a what a cool just a cool hat man i mean this is I, I know it's kind of so funny to talk about a hat in such a way, but like I like started this whole thing off where I was daydreaming of a hat like this. This hat, if you are into this sort of performance, but having a certain style, um, technical, all the things that... Um, <laughs> how do you even describe it? I mean, it's sort of just the opposite of sort of average everything about this hat is if you see somebody this hat it's like somebody wearing a cool you know um watch from japan or we're using a you know a writing instrument that is technical you know something that is uh sort of thought about this hat is really thought about now cons i don't know for sure but If it were me making this and I make bags, I, I couldn't probably help myself. You know, I only make one off bags, but, and they're not trying to make one off hats, but I couldn't help myself. I would have probably done a little bit more detail on the stitching. I would have probably like, you can see a lot of the stitching is just a single stitch and it's not really even reinforced at any of the stress points and that i mean i, I think that's a little it is it, it it i think just technically it's a little it's a little lame it's a little it's almost a little like cutting corner and i will say i don't know for sure but it seems like the visor could have been more thought about like th whatever this is made out of probably could have been by it, it could I, i'm not sure i i feel like it absorbs a little bit 
but I'm not sure. It, it could just be that, I don't know. I, to be honest, I don't know. And the, the lining here, again, I, it hasn't been long enough. We'll, we'll see, but let's just see. I mean, the lining, I can't tell but exactly, but if you look at the lining with me only using it seven times, running two and a half hours, I don't know. Let's see. There's no way I can tell at this moment like how it will stand up over time. Let's see. But the stitching for sure. I mean, the stitching just could have been better in some places. I, I think that's just it's just a fact. Now that being that being said, I do tend to go a little crazy on my sewing. And they did do some bar tack right here. Only here though, out on this side. But you know, here maybe a little bit of a double, but here no double, here all single. But again, I, you know, <laughs> it's a, my sewing that I do is ridiculous. You know, the, the double reverse zigzag, I mean this, this is just overkill completely but that being said you know give me a with a hat like this that is how much i mean it's 30 euros 30 euros over what a normal hat would be so it's double the price and it is already worth it so i guess there's that they had to cut corners somewhere perhaps but could it get you know give me a little double zigzag here right here but that being said, you don't want to mess up the fabric any more than you need to because this is a stress point that folds. So anyway, that could be a couple of cons. Since they did these laser cuts here with the, for, the, for the air intake, I think they could have thought about maybe here because, you know, that's where, that's where your forehead is. Um, what else? This, I mean, I don't know. I think I would have done without the reflective little tag. I mean, it's not bad. It doesn't really bother me, but it's, I don't know. It's, it just kind of isn't necessary, I don't think. These little holes probably could have just been bigger, a little bit bigger. But, I mean, in general, it's just, it is just such a sick hat and so well thought out. I love when I have it on backwards and I'm running and I can... I can literally, like, I can feel the air coming over my head inside, you know, which is easier because I'm bald, but still, it's, it must be, it must be flowing. All right, so I'm going to leave it there. This is the Code of Bell um, Pitch Black Basics Camper Hat. I, I mean, I'm doing this and, you know, it's really not even available. You got to. There are some places that have it, but I'm just, I'm, of course, I'm just doing this for, for fun. Anyway, pretty cool. See you.